Welcome to Atomic TV here in Art Daywell Gymnasium. The Richland Bombers host the Chihuahua River Hawks for their third time facing off this season. I'm Max Schuster alongside Scotty Kump uh, and proud to present to you the District 8 uh, semifinal game here in Art Daywall. Uh, we have the number six, six seed Chihuahua River Hawks hosted by the number two seed Richland Bombers. Scotty, like I said earlier, the third time these two teams uh, will be facing off this season. Uh, the both times the Bombers have taken 14 plus point of uh, victories led both times by Josh Wooder uh, and his phenomenal offensive play uh, this year. Sitting at third, third in scoring in the MCC. Um, Scotty, last time, uh, or, or the first time these two teams faced, Luke Westerfield for the Bombers really showed off uh, his side, his size advantage that he holds uh, over primarily everyone in the MCC. Donovan Young, um, a, a phenomenal athlete for the Chihuahua River Hawks, uh, who who has, you know, who use has tremendous size but also athleticism in Westerfield able to play a phenomenal game against him uh, and, and score the first time uh, 20 plus points uh, also for the Riverhawks they have Mason Castillo um, they they both are at 14 15 or, or Mason Castillo and Young both at 14 15 points uh, per game on the season uh, the Bombers have six players uh, with 100 points on the season though the only team in the MCC um, that, that has that so Josh Woodard with 18 points per game and the rest of the Bombers uh, playing phenomenal basketball this season they're sitting at 19 and 2 on this season uh, trying to get to trying to get to the district 8 championship game uh, which we have the bracket there uh, tonight here in Art Daywald, it's Richland hosting the Riverhawks up at Gonzaga Prep. It's Gonzaga Prep hosting Kamaikan Braves. Uh, and then in the loser bracket, Central Valley hosts Hanford High and Lewis and Clark hosts Pasco. So I'm looking on the left side of that bracket, you can see the, the, the game, the winner of, or if Gonzaga Prep wins, uh, then the, and the Bombers win. The bo Bombers will head up to s on Saturday to Gonzaga Prep. But if Kamaika wins and the Bombers win, uh, then then the, the Braves will be playing here. Uh, and if Chihuahua either if Chihuahua wins, they will be heading to either one of those schools. There on the screen we have the RPI rankings uh, from the state of Washington. 4A. Uh, it is Richland sitting at 10. Uh, so they, they broke the top 10. They stayed in the top 10 for two weeks now. Gonzaga Prep sitting at 8. Uh, so big matchup up in Spokane tonight uh, between Kamayakin and Gonzaga Prep. On the girls' side of things, the girls did come out with a big win tonight uh, against Central Valley up at Central Valley. So they've punched their ticket to the district championship game. And they will be playing at Kenwood. Uh, Scotty. Let's, let's just talk a little bit about this game. So we've seen we've seen both these teams play a couple times uh, now already. What are you expecting? You know, last time they were here, just a super exciting game. You know, we saw Young and Forbes and Westerfield going at it. A lot of block shots, a lot of dunks. Just a super exciting game. Um, I see that again tonight. You know, I think it's going to stay close in the first half. I think both teams want it a lot. And then I think... You know, Stroyfurt, we've seen him make great adjustments in the halftime and then going into the third quarter. And then I think the Bombers will kind of take their lead that they do in the third quarter. Yeah, we, I, I, I'd like to expect more of a, a, a guard battle tonight. Both these teams know what they have inside, and we know they're going to battle out inside the paint, right? But I, I, think, it's, I think it's up to Josh Woodard. Um, for the Bombers and Mason Castillo for, for the Riverhawks, setting that tone uh, from the outside and, and behind the arc um, that will really set these two teams apart. We've seen the Bombers, the Bombers shot 55% field goal percentage uh, against the against the Riverhawks, or, or against the Bulldogs last time here in our Daywall Gymnasium. Um, and, and so the Bombers are playing good ball. Uh, you, you see the score. We have the score posted here in the stadium. Uh, Bombers won 79-21. Chihuahua won 67-49 over Lewis and Clark. So both teams coming off big wins, uh, trying to punch their ticket uh, to state, uh, to, to the state tournament, whether that's to make it to the Dome or, or to get to that first round 
um, of, of elimination. Um, but both teams are trying to punch their ticket to the state tournament with a win tonight. The top three seeds from the District 8 go to state. Uh, and so this is a ticket to the championship and, and they can punch it and get one of those top two seeds. Uh, so a lot on the line, uh, almost a season on the line for these two teams. Uh, so once again, a big, a big game tonight. Um, I'm excited to watch and, and see what the Bombers can do. Um, and Coach Schroifert uh, for the Bombers and Chad Heron for the Riverhawks will battle out and show off their coaching abilities tonight. Right now I'm going to throw it down to PA announcer Michael Belize to give you tonight's introductions. They've always had this basketball tradition. Close to 5,000 people, if not more, on hand here at Daywall Gym.
Andrea Cassero for the instruction of Matt Larson and Krista Torres. Welcome back here to Atomic TV. Once again, I'm Max Schuster alongside Scotty Kemp. We're just moments away uh, from tip-off here in Art Daywell Gymnasium, the District 8 semifinals game. Uh, Scotty Lott's on the line, trying to get to that championship and punch their ticket to the state tournament. The Bombers facing off against the Chihuahua River Hawks. Young and Westerfield for the tip-off before anything started. Tip-off. There's a whistle blown and it's blown dead, but second time the charm. Young wins the tip-off. Ends up in the hands of Wright. Wright guarded by Northrop. Landoni now. They get it inside Young. Young with a floating layup. That's good. Assist from Smith. Chia won running a very uh, similar uh, play style as the Bombers. Kind of that spots uh, play that they like. This is the Riverhawks coming out of zone defense. They find Forbes on the baseline, and that's good. This is right. They swing it over, this is Landoni, guarded by Westerfield. They switch, and it's Westerfield on Young now, but Smith over to right. Screen is set. Get back on that key. Get back on that key. Landoni with under 10 seconds on the shot clock, gets it to Smith. Smith fires from three, fouled as the shot goes off. No good, but he's going to the line. Three opportunities from the free throw. <laughs> Bublinski picks up the foul, that's his first personal. First one goes. Second one good. <laughs> Trying to get all three to go and he does. Three points from the free throw line. It's a 5-2 ball game, the Riverhawks lead. Chia one in a full court zone press right now. 
trying to steal the ball from Jason. They get it to Luke down low for the layup. Luke with two points easy there, just using his size. Landoni out on the line, on the three point line. Pump fakes from three, gets Westfield to jump. It's Smith, guard by Voblinski. It tries to go over the top to Young. It goes too far and it's out of bounds. Bomber ball. Still early in the game, but really the first mistake either team has made so far. Won't cost them. They had a good shot out of it, though. Woodard guarded by Wright. This is Woodard's first touches of the game. He gets it to Northrop at the corner, and that's good. From three, corner three, land in Northrop. Wright drives, they kick it out to Young. Young with a wide open three. That's good from the corner. And the answer's right back. Both teams coming out super hot. Not missing a lot of shots and getting a lot of good rate, great looks. Boplinski struggling to find somebody. Gets it to Westfield. He fires from the corner now. No good. Northrop tries to bring down the rebound. Stipped out of his hands and it ends up in the Riverhawks' possession. Smith gets it to Castillo. Inside, it's Young, guarded by Forbes. Landoni from three. Off the side of the rim. Woodard brings down the rebound. He's moving quick. Stops, gets it to Voplinski. Voplinski, no good off the glass. But Westerfield there for the putback. Something the Bombers have struggled with this whole year is just getting those second chance points and getting rebounds and... Right there you saw Westerfield, you know, clearly they've been working on it and gets the put back. This is DJ Duran checking in for Landoni. Right over to Castillo. Castillo guarded by Woodard. He pump fakes, gets Woodard to go. Missed shot brought in by Forbes. Woodard setting the offense up now for the Bombers. Bombers with a one point lead here early. Trying to find Volpulinski cutting. They get a hand in the passing lane and it's going the other way. Smith guarded by Volpulinski. Wright tries to force it inside to Young. Forbes makes an athletic defensive play and gets the steal. It's Northrop, gets over to Westerfield. Finds Woodard, great save by Woodard, keeping that inbounds. Woodard drives, mid-range shot, no good. Castillo and Woodard, one-on-one. -on -one. Castillo, off the hands of Duran, had a wide open three-point shot, no good. And Forbes goes the other way. Too fast, it's off the front rim. Duran guarded by Forbes, backs him in, and it's going the other way. That's a charge called on Donovan Young. Yeah, I don't know about that one. You know, it looked like Forbes was kind of moving his feet as Young was backing him down. Either way, it's going to be bomber ball. Yeah, foul called. That's first foul on Donovan Young and the first foul on the Riverhawks. It is immediate timeout, so we'll be back here on Atomic TV with three minutes, 55 seconds left in our Daywell Gymnasium. The Bombers lead 9-8 to eight over the Riverhounds.
Welcome back after the break. Three minutes, 55 seconds left here in this first quarter. The Bombers lead 9-8 over the Riverhawks. We do have an update from Spokane at the end of the first quarter. Gonzaga Prep 20, Kamaikin 14. So we'll keep you updated on that as it ties very closely into this game. It's Bombers on the offensive side. It's Valencia takes it to the left. Ends up in Northrop's hands. Had a shot, didn't take it. They go inside. It's Woodard that will dribble back out. Northrop from deep. No good from three. Duran will bring in the rebound. Right, moving quick up the left side. They play such good defense. Smith, mid-range shot, that's no good. Smith tr threw up a shot there. Um, Bombers come down, you know, slow things down, set up the offense. Woodard drives, gets poked, but he keeps possession. They're in man defense now as Castillo guards v Valencia. Valencia drives, takes the hoop all by himself, is blocked off the backboard, and go another way. Donovan's playing great defense right now. And it's a blocked foul called on Woodard the other way. Woodard just couldn't quite get his feet set, and they'll call it a blocking foul. They called a shooting foul. Uh, it looked like he, was, he wasn't even really in the motion of shooting yet, but that's all right. Yeah, interesting call there, you know. First of all, kind of a block charge. Donovan can't get the first one. And then second of all, he, he wasn't really in a shooting motion yet. He's just more trying to get past watered. You can see Donovan Young's free throws there on the Horn Rapids hoop cam. Once again, thank you to Horn Rapids uh, for sponsoring Atomic TV and making live streams possible for you at home. Second one, no good by Young. Vopolinski will bring down the rebound. Woodard, double team, they find Valencia. And baseline with Forbes, he turns the ball over. She won a zone defense, able to get that turnover there. Young guarded by Westerfield. He fires from three, and that's good. Three points, Donovan Young, and gets the Riverhawks an 11 9 lead. 28% field goal percentage from the Riverhawks to a 40% from the Bombers. They swing it around the three point line. Moving the ball phenomenally, and Westerfield goes up, and he's going to the line, and one. It's a tie ball game, 11. One's all across the board. Here with two minutes and two seconds left in the first quarter. A great pass, a great finish by Westerfield. You can see on Rooster's replays. Yeah, great ball movement, like you said. And that's, that's what you have to do when you're facing a zone. you got to pass it, find the open guy. The zone has to adjust enough to find him. He's going to be open. Westerfield, no good on that. Woodard, open from three, got the shot off, no good, but the Bombers keep it in their possession. Great play there by the Bombers, keeping it uh, in their possession, getting it off of the Riverhawks. Vopolinski gets it over to Woodard. Woodard will drive, tries to kick to the corner, and pass is taken by Duran. Castillo drives, and Duran had the shot. It was, it was blocked, but it got blocked in uh, to the hoop. I'd love to see a replay on that, how that happened. <laughs> Just very confused right now. Looks like he swatted it down and somehow went up. Ball's out of bounds off the Riverhawks. To get it into Forbes. Woodard unloads from three, and that's good. That's butter from beyond the arc. Great take by Woodard. He was surrounded by Chiawana, and he said, let's take the three. 
Castillo guarded by Woodard. Woodard has backdoor Durant, or Castillo had the backdoor Durant, and it's a late foul called on Westerfield. You can see the replay there. There was lots of contact. Uh, the, the fans are just complaining about a, a late foul called uh, on Westerfield. The play had already almost, it, it, the, the, the ball had already almost been on the ground by the time uh, they called that foul. You know, I get it, the late foul, but it was, it was the right call. You saw Luke hit his arm and first one's good. Vopolinski and Westerfield check out as Northrop and Stroyford check in. Good by Durant. Woodard guarded by Castillo. You see him back in a, a, a man defense now that Westerfield's out of the game. It's Woodard. He drives baseline on Duran. Tries to get it in a striper. They get a hand on it. Still bummer ball. You saw Woodard guarded by Duran there. They got two, two of the best quarterbacks in the MCC in the fall. Uh, and two phenomenal basketball players are going at it. Valencia this time from three, and that's good. Three points good by Jordan Valencia. Gets Bombers a two-point lead, 17-15 over the River Ops. Saw that, saw that same play against Pascal last time, that Valencia coming off the top of the key, you know, trying to set up a three for him, and he hit it both times. Bombers, and Bombers able to get the rebound there as they go the other way. No shot clock left. The Bombers will slow things down and try and get one last shot here at the end of the first quarter. They get it over to Forbes. Forbes gets the screen. Five seconds remaining. It's Woodard. Gets inside of Valencia. Valencia off the glass. And that's good. It's two points for the Bombers and the first quarter is 19 to 15 the Bombers lead over the Chihuahua River Hawks. We'll be back with second quarter play here at our Daywall Gymnasium. We got a game on our hands, Scott. As you can see there, after the first stats, the Bombers 19, the Riverhawks 15. Bombers shooting 13% better at a 53% field goal percentage, uh, and the Riverhawks only 40. Three point from beyond the arc, it's 60% for the Bombers and 33% for the Riverhawks. Bombers yet to make a free throw. Uh, turnover category still tied. And that turnover category, Scotty, we've seen come into play more and more uh, in these Bomber games. It, whoever leads that turnover category uh, the, by the biggest is playing the best ball uh, in that first quarter. It's a very fair game, uh, and that's in, in the turnover category, category, and we see it uh, reflect on the scoreboard. 19-15, to 15, the Bombers lead over the Riverhawks in second quarter play is underway here in Art Daywald. Starters back in for the Bombers. It's 
This is Vobolinski with it on three. He gets trapped, but they kick it out to Forbes. Forbes fires from three off the front rim. Northrop in the right place at the right time. He gets the putback. Right gets over to Castillo. Castillo guarded by Wooder. And from three, that's no good. By Williams. Northrop brings it down the court. Popolinski goes over the top. And great ball movement as Woodard pump fakes. Has two points easy in a wide open lane to the basket. Just doesn't get easier than that. You know, Woodard, amazing pump fake. And where was the help defense there? You know, Chiwana's got to step up and someone has to stop him. Yeah, that's part of that great ball movement by the Bombers. We'll see the Riverhawks, see how they respond. Down eight here in the second quarter. Young backs Westerfield in. He cuts the hoop. Shots no good. Looks like Westerfield got a hand on it. It's off the hand of the Bomber. Riverhawk ball. Lindoni back in the game for the Riverhawks. To get into Young. Young goes up and over the top of Forbes and Westerfield. That's good. This is Vopolinski. Takes the top of the three point line. Finds Woodard coming around. Forbes gets the screen by Westerfield. He drives. Takes it himself. No good. Off the rim. It's brought in by Castile. Castile, shake and bake, goes to the rim. And it's no good. They got numbers, and Woodard goes off the glass. It's almost like an alley oop there. Finds Vopolinski uh, on the rebound, and Vopolinski got was there for the pullback. This is Cade Smith guarded by Vopolinski now. He drives Forbes, able to stop him from scoring, but Landoni keeps it in. Castillo with it on the three-point line. He drives. Goes up. No good. Westerfield able to tip it off the glass. Bombers moving up. Northrop tries to get it to Vopolinski. They're discussing if there's a tip or not. They say there's a tip. It's off the fingers of Cade Smith, and it's still bomber ball. It's a timeout by the Riverhawks. It's a full timeout. 25-17, the Bombers lead over the Riverhawks. Five minutes, 36 seconds left here in the first half. We'll be back here shortly after the break. As we wait, take a, take a look at the Roosters replays from this quarter. Welcome back here to Art Daywell Gymnasium. It's second quarter play with five minutes, 36 seconds left here in the first half. We do have an out of town update at half. The Gonzaga Prep Bullpups lead the Kamaikan Braves 35 to 30. Uh, so exciting game up there in Spokane. Here we have a 25 17, the Bombers lead over the Riverhawks. It's Northrop with it on their wing. He gets it over to Vopolinski. It's Woodard, gets a screen from Westerfield. Has the backdoor cut, but couldn't quite get it there. 
And with three seconds on the shot clock, Westerfield bobbles the ball, and it goes out of bounds. Stroyford just telling Volplinski, take that shot, take that shot. Uh, and, and uh, you know, as time expires, they needed a shot and they couldn't get one off, and it's going the other way. Five minutes to play here. Uh, Riverhawks trying to make something happen. This is Castillo's guarded by Volpolinski to get over to Smith. Smith drives. He goes up. Fouled on the way. He's going to the line. Shooting two. Foul was on Forbes. First one, no good by Smith. Second one gets to go, and it's seven-point game. Four minutes and 45 seconds left in the first half. It's Northrop who gets it to Westfield. Westfield tries to find Volblinski. He'll slow things down. Volblinski guarded by Smith. Over to Woodard, inside it's Westerfield. Using his size, he goes up, shot blocked by Young. There is a foul called this time. She wanna play in great defense right now, y'all. Really making the Bombers work for a good shot. Making them play some. It's Westerfield that drives and is up and a dunk is good. Big slam -a jamma by Luke Westerfield. Just took Young baseline and nothing was stopping him. Young goes the other way and he buries it from three. <laughs> it's Westerfield with on the three point line. He gets it over to Woodard. They swing it to Forbes. Forbes all the way to the corner to Woodard. He drives baseline, spinning around, finding something. And it's Westerfield, deep two, foot was on the line. That's a deep two by Westerfield. Westerfield really feeling it, gets him to 10 points. Uh, first double digit score for the Bombers. Young trying to cross Westerfield up and he goes up and he gets his dunk. Shows his athleticism there, he goes up. He got a big dunk. It's Forbes, guarded by Duran. Forbes gets it to Northrop. Northrop, step back three. That's good. Nothing but net. Shots are going in like nobody's business for the Bombers. It's Castillo, misses from three. Castillo this time, no good from three again. Castillo drives on Forbes' baseline, and Landoni with his shot at three, no good again. It's Volplinski going the other way, finds Northrup, he makes him, he makes him go by, three points, no good, brought in by Young. And this is Smith, guard by Volplinski. He gets it to the corner. Duran, no good from three. The Riverhawks just have him shot after shot and cannot get any shot to go. It's 32-23 here with two minutes and 15 seconds left. The Bombers calling a timeout. Thirty-second timeout. It'll be a immediate timeout actually with two minutes and 11 seconds left. Bombers lead 32-23 over the Riverhawks.
After the break, it's two minutes and 11 seconds left. The Bombers lead 32-23 over the Riverhawks. Josh Woodard and the Bombers offense trying to get things going and continue this commanding game here in the second quarter. Guard by Castillo, forced inside of Valencia. They somehow save it, and it's tipped, but Forbes able to keep it. Forbes, as the shot clock expires, gets it to go, and a foul is called on Valencia. Ritz with the number 22, Jordan Valencia, his first personal team six. This is right that will bring the ball up for the River Hawks. He's guarded by Valencia. It's an offensive foul called on the River Hawks. Foul's called on number 14, DJ Duran. Woodard finds Vopolinski. They swing it over to Forbes. Forbes. Tries to force from the corner. Ball slips out of his hands, and it's Smith going the other way. Off the glass, left hand and lane. That's good. Amazing transition by Smith there, you know, going from his right to his left to get closer to the hoop. And it's Forbes. He goes away from the screen, takes a baseline. Top of the three. Poplinski, he buries it from beyond the heart. It's over to Smith. To get it to Castillo. Castillo buries it right in Woodard's hand face. It's over to Poplinski. Valencia. Ball is turned over by the Bombers. 35-28, under 10 seconds here in the first half. Young trying for a last shot. And Young finds Duran, but time expires and the shot is no good at the, at the half. It's 35-28. The Riverhawks trail the Richland Bombers. We'll be back with the Gale Lou Halftime Show and staff from the first half here shortly on the top of TV.
Welcome back here to Atomic TV. I'm Max Schuster alongside Scotty Kump. Um, Scotty, first half of basketball is a great basketball game. Seven point game. Uh, the Bombers lead 35-28. You can't ask much, for much more if you're a Bomber fan. Uh, 53 from the field goal, from, or 53. 53% uh, field goal range from 37% uh, uh, for the Riverhawks. Uh, Bombers keep it going from beyond the arc. 5 for 10 from three point land. Uh, shooting 50%. The Riverhawks only 37%, uh, 4 for 13. Bombers still 0%. 0% field goal or free throw line percentage, but we've only shot one free throw, Scotty, so that stat uh, for the Bombers not that big of a deal. On the other side of things, the Riverhawks shoot 66% uh, percent from the free th or from the field goal or free throw line, sorry. Um, and that turnover category we talked about early, Scotty, at the end of the first quarter, 6-4, to four, the Bombers trail. Um, and and, and the, the, the fact that the Bombers uh, are still up in this game uh, is really impressive. We have the player of the half there, uh, Luke Westfield, getting it done down low with 10 points uh, for the big man. One assist, three rebounds, zero steals. Uh, but Westfield just causing havoc down there. You know, Donovan Young has 15 points, but most of those have come from, he has nine of those 15 points from beyond the arc. Uh, and, and as a big guy like Luke Westfield, he's not usually used to playing uh, a, a guy that can shoot like that. Um, so Westerfield uh, holding his ground down low, just struggling a little bit when uh, Donovan Young starts shooting from beyond the arc. Uh, but Scotty, with that, that wraps up the Gale Rue halftime show. Uh, we'll be back with the Gale Rue post game show after the game with a, a coach interview and hopefully player interview. Uh, but second, second half play. Uh, is almost underway here in our Daywell Gymnasium. The Bombers lead 35-28 uh, with a report from Spokane. Last we checked, uh, halfway through the third quarter, it was 42 to 30. The Bombers or the the River or the Braves trailed to the Bulldogs. And Wright will set things up for the Riverhawks. They get it inside to Young early. This is Forbes guarding Young this half. Uh, Smith cuts down low, great ball movement. They find Young for an open three, no good. Woodard will come down with the rebound. It's Woodard over to Northrop. Forbes. And it's a push off, offensive foul called on the Bombers. Fouls called on number five, Jack Forbes. Uh, don't really know what happened there, but they say he shoved off. That's Forbes' second personal foul, so he'll check out. They need him for late in the game. And they'll switch Westerfield over to guarding Young. Yeah, Chiwana has really loved switching between a zone and man defense. They've come out with a man defense starting in the second half. We'll see how that plays. It's Duran who hands it off to Castillo. Castillo now guarded by Valencia. Wright has a wide open three pointer, and that's good. Nothing but net. Valencia dribbles it off his foot, but they keep possession. It's Northrup looking for something. He gets it to Voplinski. Voplinski gets a screen and finds Northrup. Bombers with 10 seconds on the shot clock. As Northrop drives, he kicks things out. And Woodard has a mid-range jumper, in and out, no good. Still, Bombers yet to score. It's a four-point game here early in the second half. And the block is off the hands of Northrop. Out of bounds, Riverhawk ball. Yeah, great job by Northrop just keeping his footing and able to focus on the ball and not get the foul. They get it to right in the corner. Guarded by Northrop. It's Castillo now. Hedged off by Valencia and the foul is called. Valencia, second. 
That's Valencia's second personal, second team foul. Castillo, great move there. And Smith aiming to get a putback, and it's a two point game. Two point game, Bombers yet to score here in the second half. They get over to Vopolinski. Valencia from beyond the arc, that's no good. Westfield brings in the rebound. Backs in Young, goes up, fighting for the rebound. It's off the hand of Young, and it's Bomber ball. It's always fun to see two players just really going at it in the rebounds, you know really can make a huge difference in this game, you know, just trying to get those second chance points. Almost five seconds, Young steals it anyways, and it's Riverhawk ball. Bombers just struggling to get anything going on the offensive end and can't seem to stop Young on the defensive side. Makes a move, has a shot, no good. Northrop brings down the rebound. To get over to Valencia. Valencia, he drives, kicks out. And it's Northrop that has Westerfield wide open. Westerfield can't get the mid-range shot. Lots of contact, and it ends up being a jump ball in possession in favor of the Bombers. Northrop checks out. Chihuahua is just playing really good defense right now, you know, making it really hard for the Bombers to really get anything going. And With that, it's a 30-second timeout called by the Chihuahua Riverhawks. We'll be back here shortly after the break. Woodard gets it into Vopolinski and it's off the hands of Duran. We have an update from out of town in the big second half of the third quarter. Uh, G Prep only leads by three to the Braves. 49, 6 or 46. Uh, Gonzaga Prep leads over Kamaikin. Back here in our Daywald, it's the Bombers on offense trying to get things going here in this third quarter. Vopolinski gets it to Valencia. Valencia will drive. Gets it to Forbes, ball is blocked. Duran saves it from going out of bounds and it's in Smith's hands. Valencia playing great defense there. Tips it out of bounds, but it's still Riverhawk ball. Once again, we can just see this great hustle by Duran, you know, able to tip the ball and get the save. Just great job by Chiawana. It's Castillo guarded by Woodard. Gets a screen. He'll double team him. Castillo keeps the ball, hands it off to Duran. It's Forbes really doing it all. And Duran wide open from three point. No good. Somehow Young keeps it from going out of bounds. It's now Woodard on Young. Mis mismatch the Riverhawks want. He goes up off the glass. And it's a tie ball game here in North Naval. 35 35, halfway through the third quarter. Westerfield switched on to Young halfway through that possession, and he was still able to get under him and get the layup. Amazing move. It's Woodard guarded by Wright. He takes it to the hoop. Ball swatted out of bounds. <laughs> Bombers looking for a foul there. They just saying it's lots of contact, no fouls called, but it's still it's still Bomber ball. They get over to Woodard. Drives baseline. Step back shot. That's 
around the rim and out, no good. Woodard only has five points here. Bombers only player with double digits, it's Westerfield. Smith unloads from three, and that's good. Gets it going, they take a three point lead. Here, three minutes, 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Bombers still scoreless here in the second half, and they just can't seem to get anything going on offense. And as I say that, Westerfield puts up a little hook shot. We'll see if that's the break the Bombers need to keep them in this game. One point game, the Bombers trail to the Riverhawks. Three minutes, 15 seconds left. We'll see what Wright does down on the Chihuahua side of things. It's Smith now, guarded by Volkolinski. Ball's tipped to Steele's hands. Mid-range floater, that's good. Riverhawks can't seem to miss. It's back to a three-point game, 37-40. Just a great pull-up jumper by Castillo there with Woodard on his back. Down low on the block, Volpolinski gets it off the glass, and that's good. Great, great little finish there uh, by Valencia. It's Valencia playing defense on Castillo. Drives baseline, finds right on the other side of things. He misses it, and Westfield gets the rebound. Moving quick. They find Volpolinski down low. Left-handed lay-in off the glass. That's good. He's going to land the line, trying for three points the old-fashioned way. Before that extra free throw, it's a media timeout. Two minutes and 13 seconds left. The Bombers lead by one over the Riverhawks. We'll be back here shortly. Welcome back here to Atomic TV at Art Daywell Gymnasium. We have a one-point game on our hands, and it's Jace Voplinski towing the line for the Bombers, trying for three points the old-fashioned way. Horn Rapids hook cam there showing you the free throws. Once again, thank you to Horn Rapids for sponsoring Atomic TV and making live streams possible. Free throw good by Volpolinski. We also have Brock Stoifert checking in, who just checked in for Luke Westerfield. Valencia playing defense on Landoni. Landoni gets it to Castillo. Castillo sends Smith. Valencia gets the steal and he's going out of the way. And the foul called, and he's going to the line, shooting to Williams. Just couldn't, couldn't quite control it. He picked up a foul there as, as uh, Valencia was going up for the lane. You can see a Roosters replay there uh, showing you that foul. Just lots of contact, uh, hack across the arms, and Valencia has opportunity for two now. First one good by Valencia. Also amazing steal, or not steal. Excuse me, steal and speed from Valencia. You know, he had the ball and he was still able to get out ahead and draw on the foul. Valencia gets both to go and they get into a four point game. The Bombers lead 44 to 40 over the Riverhawks. Castillo will set the offense up for the Riverhawks, trying to combat the four points, the four points easy 
for the Bombers. Smith, no good from three, but Castile will bring in the rebound. It's Landoni who takes a shot from beyond the arc. It's tipped out of bounds off of Forbes' hands. It's Chiawana ball. You don't want to get in a lot of chances here on the offensive end. Bombers just can't reel in a rebound without Westerfield right now. They get it to Smith. Smith guarded by Volpolinski. He drives and fouls called, and he's going to the line, shooting two. Smith on the line. First one good. They'll bring some size back in the game with Duran. And they put right back in. Landoni and Williams check out for the Riverhawks. Both good from Smith, and it's back to a two-point game. The Bombers lead 44-42 with a minute and 15 seconds left in the third quarter. They get it to Forbes in the corner. Oh, the ball's on the ground. Smith ends up with it. Out of control. But gets it to Duran. In the corner, it's Castillo. Castillo no good from three. Valencia had the ball, but it's tipped out of bounds off Valencia's hand. You can see right there, it's off Valencia's hand. Castillo drives baseline. Gets it to... Duran across the key, great find there by Castillo. Two points easy for the Riverhawks and DJ Duran. Woodard, guarded by Castillo. Hands up. 25 seconds on the clock, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Woodard drives, mid-range floater, that's no good. Woodard just can't get any shot to go, and it's a travel call as Castillo fell to ground with the ball. Bomber ball. Bomber's definitely caught a break there. Um, Josh Woodard just <laughs> almost has a lid on the hoop uh, today. And the alley -oop shot floater good by Jack Forbes. Couldn't, ask, couldn't draw that play up much better. Right spinning around. With five seconds on the clock, Westerfield brings the rebound down, and a foul is called on Cade Smith. Into the game for the Bombers is Northrop. They get it into Woodard. As shot expires, he leaves it way short. It's 46, 44 at the end of three. The Bombers lead over the Chihuahua River Hawks in fourth quarter play with lots of excitement here in Art Daywald. Leads for an exciting end of this game in this District 8 semifinals.
You see on the screen that after three stats, the Bombers lead 46-40 over the Riverhawks. Bombers shooting 48% from field goal, uh, from field goal percentage, and the Riverhawks 37. Uh, but that turnover category down, down at the bottom that we've talking about the whole time, the Bombers trail by three in that category. Nine turnovers for the Bombers, only three or only six for the Riverhawks. Fourth quarter play is shortly underway, and Scotty, we have nonetheless a game, a great game on our hands. Uh, the Bombers lead by two at the start of the fourth quarter over the Chihuahua Riverhawks. Smith guarded by Volpolinski, screen set by Young. We'll switch off as Forbes guarding Smith. Smith can't get the shot to go, and Northrop will save it from going out of bounds. the Bombers offense to keep them in this game. Woodard calls for a screen from Vopolinski, or from Westerfield, sorry. Westerfield finds Northrop. Drives under 10 seconds on the shot clock. And it's Woodard, he drives, he goes up, and a foul call, and he's going to the line, shooting two. It's Woodard trying for two. First one, no good by Woodard. Second one's good by Woodard. Gets it to a three-point game. Still one possession game. Riverhawks have a chance to tie it with the three-point. Right. Over to Young. Young drives on Northrop. Goes up. The ball's tipped. And a foul's called on the Riverhawks. Foul's called on Duran. Very interesting call there, you know, you kind of see both teams going up the ball, but didn't really get super physical. Just curious what the refs saw there. They force it inside, it's tipped by Young. Right going the other way, guarded by Woodard. He goes up off the glass, the lane is good. Northrop goes over to Westerfield. To get it to Woodard. In the corner, it's Woodard. Woodard drives baseline, has Northrop. Northrop wide open from three, and that's good. He buries it from beyond the arc. Big three points there by Landon Northrop. Gets it to a four point game. It's Durand guarded by Westerfield. It's Young, who gets it to Duran. Duran wide open from the corner. He gets it to go. Three points there by DJ Duran. It looked like Westfield was almost tempting him to shoot that, uh, wanting, thinking he wasn't going to make it. And it's a foul call on the Riverhawks. Just to go back to that last possession, it was a huge shot from Duran. They've been leaving him open all night, and he finally decides to pull a trigger, and just turns out very well for the Riverhawks. Riverhawks not agreeing with hardly any of the fouls uh, called recently. Castillo picks up his second foul. Team six foul. Only three fouls for the Bombers. They get it into Westerfield. Westerfield, top of the key to Opalinski.
Woodard drives. No good as shot's blocked. Tipped off one of the Riverhawks players. And Riverhawks saying it tipped off of them. We're off the Bombers. Let's see what the referees decide. Smith had a guy open, but having a tough time to get it to him. And the refs will keep it down here with the Riverhawks. Yeah, they say it was just, uh, it got tipped by the Bombers. As Northrop goes the other way, laying, that's no good. He's, Durant steps out of bounds as he brings in the rebound. And it's bomber ball. Woodard inbounding for the Bombers. He gets it into Forbes. Forbes will turn around, floater, no good. And they say it's off of Young's hand. And they still claim it's off of Young's hands. Lots of commotion, primarily due to the referees, and the Bombers still lead by one with five minutes. With nine seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Lots of excitement here in Art Daywell Gymnasium. We'll see what this fourth quarter holds uh, after the break. Five minutes, nine seconds left. The Bombers still lead by one over the Riverhawks. They get into Westerfield. In the corner, it's Woodard. It's Woodard who drives, finds Westerfield down low. We'll see what Westerfield does with it. Turn around, off the glass. That's a great hook shot there by Westerfield. It's great fundamentals there by Westerfield. You know, get the great hook shot off the class and puts the Bombers up by three. This is Duran. Last time he made the three, but Smith this time going for three. No good. Woodard will bring down the rebound and they'll see what we'll see what they do. Northrop wide open. Shot no good. Boblinski trying for the rebound. Forbes mid-range shot. Just rolls right across the rim. No good. It's right, guarded by Northrop. Duran bearing it from beyond the arc again. Duran coming up huge for the Riverhawks right now, just nailing threes. It's a tie ball game here with three minutes, 50 seconds left. Woodard drives baseline, kicks out to Forbes. Forbes finds Northrop. Northrop goes, ball's tipped out of his hands. Forbes drives fouled on the way and he's, it's, it's a one and one foul called so he's going to the line trying or automatically one trying for a second one it's a media timeout in three minutes 40 seconds left it's a 52-52 ball game in Art Naval Gymnasium District 8 semifinals
welcome you back here at Art Daywell Gymnasium. Scotty, we got a game on our hands nonetheless. 52, 52, three minutes, 40 seconds left in this fourth quarter. To update you, timeouts left. The Bombers have still have four timeouts. The Riverhawks only with two. And the Riverhawks are shooting, or, or have, have seven fouls. So the Bombers are shooting one and one. Uh, and the Bombers only have three fouls. Which will come come into this game and come, come become a big factor late in this game. Northrop on the line with his first. First is good. It's great to see him make one. You know, we saw last time against Kamayak and, you know, those big moments Linden couldn't, couldn't produce. He went 0 for 2. And luckily Volplinski stepped in that game. But great to see him make one. Let's see if he can get the second. Northrop gets both to go. Northrop will check out after those in Valencia into the Bombers. It's right. They bring the ball up for the Riverhawks. Smith drives on Volblinski, somehow gets it to go. That gets Smith to 15 points on the night. Smith. And Young combined for 30 or 42 points. It's Valencia wide open from three. That's good. Money man Valencia. They get it into Young. Valencia tipped the ball. Great defense there by Valencia. Uh, and it's out of bounds. Still bomber or still Riverhawk ball. Right from three, that's good. Riverhawks have nine three-pointers on the night. That's really what's keeping them in this game. Roblinski gets up and got tipped on the way up. Two minutes, 30 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Tie ball game. Smith over, guarded by Roblinski. Foul call. It's an and one foul. As good of a defender as Volplinski's been all year, it seems like he can't stop Smith right now. Smith just feeling himself. Yeah, Smith having a really great night. Get three points there. This Riverhawks a three-point lead. Gets the screen. He spins back to the hoop, goes up, shot is blocked, but Westerfield gets the put back. One point game now. Bombers still trail. And it's right. Guarded by Valencia. You see off ball. Young working. And it's a, it's a foul call on the ground. That's Woodard that picks up a foul. Northrop will check in for the Bombers as Volplinski takes a seat. He has three fouls, three personal fouls. They want to save him up for when they need him most. It's a one point game. The Bombers trail 59 to 60 to the Riverhawks. It's right. It's Valencia guarding Smith now. Smith drives the hoop. It's right on the three point line. Castillo from three, no good, and Northrop will bring the rebound back. It's a timeout called by the Bombers. It's a full timeout. Bombers 59, Riverhawks 60. Scotty, we, have, we still got a game here on our hands after the break. 
A minute and 22 seconds left on the clock. Minute 22 seconds. The Bombers 59, the Riverhawks 60. It's bomber ball. Woodard gets it into Valencia. It's Woodard now, guarded by right. Russian field over to Woodard. A great find by Woodard and Westerfield gets up. The big slamma jamma by Luke Westerfield. Great play by Woodard there, just finding the open man and under a minute to play here in the Art Daywell gym. It's Young who goes up over the top of Forbes and Westerfield. Bombers trail by one, 45 seconds on the clock. It's Woodard. He finds Forbes cutting, he goes up, and it's a charge call. You can see there, Casillo just had his feet set as Forbes went up. It's a full timeout called by the Bombers. 61-62, the Bombers trail to the Chihuahua Riverhawks. The energy just keeps to rise, keeps rising here as both fans go at it. 37 seconds left, Riverhawk ball. It's Young guarded by Forbes. Aggressive defense to hand it off to Smith. The foul's called. Seventh foul and it's one and one. Forbes picks up his fourth foul. Forbes will check out. Putting Westerfield in, just trying to get the rebound, you know. They can afford two free throws if it comes to that. This will have to get the three and send it to overtime if possible. 30 seconds on the clock, 0.9 seconds dip separate the shot and game clock. Makes the first, gets a second chance opportunity, and can get it to a three point game.
Smith misses a second, and Young brings down the rebound. He gets the lay in to go, up and under. Northrop moving quick, gets it to Valencia, and Woodard has the ball now. Foul called. Foul's called on Dion Wright. First personal foul, eighth team foul. Woodard on the line, shooting two, can get this to a two point game with 20 seconds left on the clock. Woodard makes the first. Both good from Woodard, and it's a two-point game, 20 seconds on the clock. Smith has the ball, guarded by Volkolinski. They get it to Castillo. He drives, they find Young down low. Young goes up and gets the dunk. Thomas moving quick. It's Woodard, guarded by Wright. He'll shoot the three. That's good! It's a one-point ball game with four seconds on the clock. You could not ask for a better finish than this. Woodard just buries the three late in this game. Four seconds on the clock. It's a 30 second timeout by the Bombers. We'll stay here. Uh, Scotty, I don't even know what to say. Uh, almost looked like an and one call. That's a one point game. Woodard somehow buried it. Um, but, you know, they're, they're in bonus. I'd, I'd expect the Bombers will try and foul. Um, that, that's what they do. That's all you can do right now. You, you First thing, deny. Don't let them get the ball. But if they somehow foul as quickly as possible, send them to a line. If they make both, great, whatever. You have to get the three. You just cannot waste any more time. That's the number one priority is time. Uh, if anyone is not going to foul, though, the Bombers cannot have Jack Forbes foul. Has four fouls already, so he's foul out of the game. He is guarding Young, though. They get it into Young, and the Bombers and Jace Wolblinski will foul. For only point, point 0.6 seconds run off the clock. It's 4.1 seconds left. Only one timeout left for the Bombers. Bombers trail by one. Uh, so if Young, it's a timeout by the Riverhawks. It's a full timeout. Uh, but if Young, if Young misses this, they all they have to do is get one bucket, uh, and, and they could and then put him up if they make it. If he makes both, it'd be a three-point game. And if he only makes one, two to tie it, three to win it. Uh, so Scotty, a lot on the line here, uh, and you couldn't ask for much better of a finish. You really couldn't, you know, both teams have just put their heart and sweat into this, you know, both teams trying, season on the line, just, it's great to see how much both teams want it. Young toes the line to the Riverhawks. Young makes the first. Young gets both to go. The timeout's called. Four point one seconds on the clock. Bomb is down by three. They need a three. We saw Woodard hit one the last time. 
Um, not, there's, there's nothing new other than probably get the ball in Woodard's hands, hope he can, hope he can get something to fly. I mean, if I was Trevor right now, I would just put in my five best shooters. They're gonna be, they're gonna be on Woodard, like the best defense they've ever played. You don't want him to be shooting the ball. Luckily, they have a lot of great shooters. You know, put them in the corners. You know, spread out the offense, and just really try and put up a quick shot. The best thing, the last thing you do is just not want to get up a shot. So, just try and find an open shot, take the first one you see. Four point one seconds on the clock, Scotty. Uh, three point game. It, if the Bombers get it to go somehow uh, and send this thing to overtime, it'd truly be amazing. I mean, it, it, it's truly phenomenal uh, that it's come down to this. Bombers led all game, fourth quarter. Uh, the Riverhawks came out, lots of energy, and, and took the lead. Something that Chiona could do is just foul right away and only give him two free throws. No foul! It's Northrop inbounding it. He gets it into Woodard. Woodard guarded by Castile. Woodard gets a shot off. Shot off the front rim, and it's no good. At end of the fourth quarter and end of regulation, the Richmond Bombers 66, the Chiwana River Hawks 69. Bombers get their first loss to an MCC team from the, in the season. Bombers fall, fall to three from the Riverhawks. This means the Riverhawks will be going to either Gonzaga Prep or Kamiakin on Saturday, and the Bombers will have to fight uh, for one more win. Uh, to, kick, to take them to the state tournament. We'll be back with the Gale Room post game show shortly, possibly with player and coach interviews. Uh, nonetheless, some final game stats.
Welcome back to the Gale Rue Post Game Show, Scotty, after an eventful game. Uh, 66 for the Bombers and 69 for the Riverhawks. They take the win. Uh, we'll be heading to the District 8 Championship game. Uh, and the Bombers will have to fight for one more shot uh, on, their, on their trip uh, to the Tacoma Dome that they've all been hoping for. Scotty, some final game stats uh, we have. The Bombers, uh, you know, finish, uh, didn't finish the game that they wanted to or how they, how they want to, and, and it really uh, it, it really came down to just not shots going in. Bombers were 25 from 52 uh, from field goal, uh, so about 50%, but beyond the arc, uh, 8 from 15. Uh, and that's where a lot of uh, a lot of those missed opportunities at the end uh, really came from. On the other side of things, the Riverhawks nine from 25 from three, uh, so only had one more three point than the Bombers, but they came when they needed it. They it the the Riverhawks really uh, clutched up, and and that's that's the best way to put it. Um, leading scorer for the Bombers it was Jordan Valencia with 12, or it was Luke Westerfield with 18, followed by Valencia with 12. Uh, and Northrop with 13, tagged on by 11 from Woodard. Uh, and for the Riverhawks, Donovan Young really doing it all down low. 25 points, uh, tagged on from 19 from Cade Smith. Um, Scotty, it tonight it really came down. It really came down to, to who was making shots and who was who was making the best decisions. Uh, we're going to have a coach interview uh, here in a moment with Coach Earl Stroyford. We're here with uh, head coach Earl Stroyford. Coach, uh, obviously not the way you guys wanted to finish that game, uh, but what do you guys do moving forward uh, still trying to pursue for, pursue the state tournament? Well, crying out loud, I mean, had a team play really good, and, and I don't think we played our best, but guys made great effort. We just didn't execute on either end of the floor, and, you know, we took our chances with certain guys, and they made shots, didn't make them in the first half, made them in the second half, and you know, put ourselves in a position to tie the game there at the end and got a good look and just didn't work out. And I've been on, I've been on both ends of this game. I, I've gone into tournaments as a four or a six seed and beat the number one team and then watch those guys go get a trophy at state. And that's our goal. So, you know, it's a bump in the road and sometimes the lessons are hard. I mean, lose at home in a game like that, Max, is not easy. But welcome to the real world. Life's not easy either. So... Our approach will be, you know, we'll get home, get something to eat, go to bed, get up tomorrow, and we'll worry about who we're playing, and we'll get ready. Yeah, so next game will be here, Coach. Uh, and, and, you know, we've still been hosting games here in Art Daywald. Just what, how big of an impact does it make just to play here? Well, it didn't make much impact tonight, obviously. Um, you know, I'm being a little facetious there. It's a great place to play, and our fans are awesome. So anytime you get a chance to play at home is a, is a great deal. So... Um, you know, I don't think you can read too much into it. Now, you just have to be a warrior to the, you know, from here on out. And, you know, you're, you're nice if we would have played ourselves into that position, but sometimes it's hard to beat a team three times in a year. And, um, you know, I thought, I thought Chiawana had a great plan and took advantage of some of our weaknesses. And, you know, we created some problems for ourselves by, by not executing offensively or defensively. And, you know, they were the aggressor on both ends the whole game, and there were set parts of the game where we were we were the aggressor, but it wasn't very often, and that's a rarity for our guys. So uh, we'll bounce back. Our, I mean, we did everything we could with what we had today, and it just didn't work out. All right, well, Coach, we hope we'll see you again uh, here on Atomic TV, uh, but not the, not the way you finished, but still uh, good luck in postseason play, Coach. Thank you well, I appreciate it. it. Thanks, Max. Okay. Thank you. After that interview, we'll wrap things up here on the Gale Root Post Game Show. Once again, thank you for all listening at home. Uh, like we heard Coach say, you know, 
uh, not not every, not all the time. Uh, it's it's the fault of your team, but also, uh, you know, the other team played great. Chiwana came out, played phenomenal game tonight against the Bombers. Great plan. Um, but we'll be back here on Atomic TV uh, hosting, I believe, on Friday night. Uh, so we'll see you guys then. Uh, and after that, have a phenomenal night uh, from us at Atomic TV. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to uh, once again Scotty Kump, my my co-host. Uh, Tanner True for doing it all up in the booth. Kelsey Jones for doing replays. All our camera crew. Uh, Tate Meyer, Sean Murphy, and Richland CTE. And a big shout out to Horn Rapids, Gale Rue, and Roosters for always making our live streams possible uh, and sponsoring us. Thank you and have a phenomenal night. Go Bombers.